Hey, welcome to Healed Part 8. In this video, we're going to talk about your need to stop punishing yourself. The reason that we punish ourselves is because occasionally we make mistakes or the enemy loves to bring up our past mistakes over and over again so that we feel guilty, we feel condemned and ashamed, and so we begin to punish ourselves in this twisted effort to try to earn God's favor. Well, you don't have to do that. Jesus has you on a process to become healed. That is a holistic lifestyle change to where you can be a healthy person by the power of the Holy Spirit. To do that, we've talked about so far, you need to identify what that idol is. What is that one thing that Jesus wants to get out of your way so that you can be healthy? Once you've asked him to do that, you've got to start filling that space with something new, with something that's good. Because if you don't, the enemy is going to fill it for you. Well, to do that, you have to realize that Jesus is willing for you to be healed. But you have to be willing also. If you don't partner with Jesus in your healing, you're actually going to work against him and it's not going to work very well for you because you're not going to have the faith to receive it. Well, a big part of that is having a plan. The Holy Spirit's going to give you some action steps to work towards your goal of being healthy. And as you begin to put those into process, well, you can't do everything all at once. That's going to be too overwhelming. So you have to do it little by little. As you begin to put it into practice little by little, though, you also need some standing stones in your life. You need to track your progress. You need something that's going to serve as a reminder to encourage you how far you've progressed moving forward so that on your rough days when you struggle, and by the way, you are going to struggle and that's natural, you want to be able to look back to those standing stones in your life and say, hey, this is what God is doing. This is where God is. Is taking me. Well, inevitably, along this process, you're going to deal with feelings of frustration, bitterness, and anger. And a lot of those are going to be directed at yourself. You're going to think things like, why? Why in the world did I allow myself to get here? You're going to think things like, how stupid could I be? How how big of a piece of garbage am I that I did that thing, that I've been going down that path, that I've allowed myself to, to get where I'm at today. I, I hate me. And you know what, man? I deserve this. No. No, you don't. Now, without Jesus, maybe you do. Because there are consequences to sin. But Jesus already took your punishment on the cross. So for you to try to punish yourself, that's pretty selfish because Jesus has already done it. So when we try to punish ourselves, when we beat ourselves up, when we self-flagellate, when we hurt ourselves on purpose in a way to somehow try to justify what we've done and make ourselves right with God, well, what we're saying is Jesus, your sacrifice wasn't enough. We're trying to earn our own salvation and we're actually working against the work that God has done for us and in us. So hear me on this. Stop it. Stop punishing yourself. Let me give you an example from my own life. A number of years ago, um, when I had really just started to uh, understand who Jesus is, well, like anybody else, I still had a lot of things in my life that I had not turned over to God yet. When, when I got saved, I came from a background where I had, a, I had indulged in quite a bit of sexual sin. Well, as a new believer, I found myself in a relationship with a Christian girl. And over time, there were, there were moments where I would try to push the, the physical aspect of our relationship further than it should have gone because that was not honoring to the Lord. Well, one night, I, uh, I, I, I tried to do something that I, I should not have done. And the girl that I was dating, she got upset with me, rightfully so. Unfortunately, she was having to take the lead in our relationship spiritually at that time because I just wasn't mature enough yet. And she ended up getting upset with me and uh, leaving the house and, and going home. Well, when she left, I went into my room. 
I laid down on my bed and I rolled over and I faced the wall and I had tears streaming down my face. I was so mad at myself for falling into and giving into that temptation. I was filled with all of this self-hatred and all I wanted to do in that moment was hurt myself so that I would somehow stop doing that sin the next time it presented itself. I thought that I could hurt myself enough so that I, I would stop doing the thing that I was doing. By the way, that's dumb. Because the reality of it is, it was the sin and giving in to the sin and feeling bad about myself that led me into doing the sin the next time and the next time and the next time. So self-punishment, all it does is drive us deeper into our problem. It never solves anything. Well, that night, I prayed a prayer. And it was a prayer that changed the next 18 years of my life. I said these words, God, I want to be fat. Come on, who prays that? Well, I did. Because again, I had this twisted, distorted understanding of how God works and what God's love is all about. And I thought, you know, if I'm fat, if I'm overweight, well, this sinful issue that I have with sex, it's going to go away because nobody's going to want to have that kind of relationship with me. Well, little did I know that that sinful temptation would not go away by being overweight but I was also opening up a door very wide for Satan to walk right into my life and create a whole new stronghold. You see, sometimes in our desire to get rid of one sin, we will trade it for another. Unfortunately, that new sin often grows stronger and worse in our lives than the old one ever was. I traded the God of sex for the God of food and gluttony. And it took over complete control in my life. Over the next nine months, I gained close to 100 pounds. I was obsessed with eating. It's all I did. It's all I wanted to do. It's all I could think about doing. And I ate everything and anything in front of me all kinds of donuts and cookies and pops and, and pizza and candy bars. And I put on weight very, very quickly. Well, that was devastating to me. It was devastating to my concept as a person. It was devastating to my, my confidence. And it really wrecked my identity in Jesus because I began to be frustrated. And I was upset with God. Well, God, how in the world, why would you allow this to happen to me? Why, why would you allow me to just have no control? Like I had zero control in my life. I just, I couldn't stop eating. I couldn't stop wanting more and more and more. Well, I forgot about that prayer that I had prayed because in reality, that wasn't a prayer to God because that wasn't God's will for my life. That was a prayer. It was an invitation to the enemy to come and wreck me. And you know what? Maybe you've never prayed that prayer, but maybe you've said things to yourself like, you know what? I deserve to be an alcoholic. Or, you know what? I, I deserve to, to feel broken. I deserve to feel hopeless. I deserve to be miserable. Because you are angry at yourself for the sin that you've given into. But you can't punish yourself. The reality of it is, you can't punish yourself to make up for your sin anyway, so you might as well stop trying. And as I just mentioned, Jesus has already done the work for you. In Romans chapter 8, it says something really important. So, now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Jesus is not holding your sin from your past, or even the mistakes that you make right now against you. So in your process of getting healthy, as you look back, or as you stumble in the present, you're not condemned because you belong to Christ. So stop looking for the shoe to drop. 
Stop looking for ways to beat yourself up. Stop looking for ways to punish yourself with your words, your thoughts, or your actions. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. You are free. You're free. That's what the whole freedom class that you just took as part of the growth track was all about, to help you to understand the supernatural power and authority you've been given by Jesus to be free. You just have to learn to walk in it. And instead of having those negative thoughts about yourself where you beat yourself up and tell yourself that you deserve this, now you can remind yourself that you are free. Are you just gonna sit in a jail cell when the door's been unlocked? Or are you gonna walk over to the cell, open the door, and walk into your freedom? Because really, that decision is completely yours. It belongs to you. Are you gonna keep punishing yourself when Jesus has already taken your punishment, or are you gonna take the freedom that he's presented to you and begin to live out a new life of healing because of the freedom that he has provided? That's your choice.